So number one, we're in some space. And incidentally, the name of that space, the name of the space that contains the state vectors is called vector space. And this is an example of a vector space. So the vector space is defined by the variables and by two very important rules for operating with vectors. And those two rules are going to carry us through the rest of the course, and they are absolutely critical. The first rule is called addition. And at first, I'm now going to develop these rules and procedures, one dimension, two dimensions. So right now, let's do one dimension, which is one variable. So if we have one variable, let's call it x. x is the variable. And let's say that two values of x are x1 and x2. Now, of course, that also means that those are two different points in the one-dimensional vector space. But right now, I just want to think of them as two variables and think of them algebraically, just as two variables. So the first rule is we know how to add two one vectors because a one vector is a number. And we learned how to add two numbers in the second grade. So if x1 is a vector and x2 is a vector, we can make a third vector called x1 plus x2. And we know how to add these two things because they are two numbers and we know how to add numbers. So we know how to add two vectors to get a third vector in the same space. The second rule is called multiplication. And when I say multiplication, I'm going to add something. I'm going to say multiplication by a number. Because we do not know and we do not define the product or the multiplication of two vectors. We have no idea what that means. If x1 is a temperature and x2 is a temperature, what is the product of two temperatures? I have no idea. So we don't, in general, multiply vectors. We do multiply vectors by numbers. And so if a is a number and x1 is a vector, then we claim we understand the product a times x1, again, because we know how to multiply a number by a number. This a is a number. This x1 is a number. We know how to multiply two numbers. And so a times x1 is going to be some other vector x2, and that's also going to be an element of the space. So these are the two principal rules for dealing with vectors. Addition of two vectors and multiplication of a vector by a number, and incidentally, when we do multiply this vector by this number here, the fancy name for this number is a scalar. So a scalar is just a number that we multiply. It has no units. We multiply the vector by the scalar to get a new number of animals or temperature or whatever. So for example, and this sounds like I'm belaboring the obvious and going back and rediscovering the second grade, but, but, but bear with me here. Um, what we are saying is three rabbits plus four rabbits, and this is x1 and this is x2, are going to add to x3, 
which is in this case seven rabbits. And if I have three rabbits, and I multiply that by four, not four rabbits, but four, then I have 12 rabbits. So these are the rules for adding vectors and multiplying a vector by a scalar in one dimension. Now let's go to two dimensions where it becomes much more interesting. So let's take a shark tuna case where I have one state vector representing S1, T1, a certain number of sharks and a certain number of tuna. And I want to add to it a second state vector, which I'm going to call S2, T2. How do I add two two-dimensional state vectors? There is no automatic answer to this question, but there is an answer. The answer is we define the sum of two vectors by adding them component-wise. So the sum of S1, T1 and S2, T2 is going to be the new state vector, which I'll call S3, T3, and that's going to be equal to S1 plus S2, comma, T1 plus T2. So we add the two S components, we add the two T components, that is the sum of two vectors. We say vectors add component-wise. So if we had, and this makes total sense, right? Because if you had three sharks and two tuna, and you're adding that to seven sharks and eight tuna, well, you need to add, as they say, apples to apples and oranges to oranges. You need to add sharks to sharks and tuna to tuna. So the sum of these is going to be three sharks plus seven sharks is 10 sharks. And two tuna plus eight tuna is also 10 tuna. So that's how we add two state vectors. If there are three components, we're working in three-dimensional system, same thing, S1, T1, P1, plus S2, T2, P2 is equal to S1 plus S2, comma, T1 plus T2, comma, P1 plus P2. Okay, what about the second rule, the multiplication of a vector by a scalar? If A is a scalar and ST is a two-dimensional state vector, we define A times ST as a times S and A times T. And that also makes sense because if you think about a certain number of sharks and a certain number of tuna, and I say, I want to take a patch of ocean that is twice as big as the previous. I want to multiply it by two and everything else is homogeneous. What would I expect to see? I would expect to see twice as many sharks and twice as many tuna. So A times ST is equal to AS comma AT. So that's it. Those are the rules for algebraically manipulating vectors and operating with them and operating on them. Those are the only two rules we're ever going to use, and we're going to use them a lot. But now the thing that I want to do is I want to go back, remember we're talking about the algebra and the geometry. And we were talking about how the state is equivalent to a point on a line or a point in a two space or a point in a three space. Now what I want to do is I want to go back to these two operations, vector addition 
and scalar multiplication. And I want to show you what they look like geometrically. So first of all, let's work in 1D where we have a state variable x and the state space is x space and here is a point x1. So we're going to have two values here, x1 and x2. Here is the point x1. Here is the point x2. Here is the point 0. And in this case, of course, our state space, because it's animals, has only non-negative numbers. Because negative numbers of rabbits just don't make sense. So our state space, for physical reasons, is confined to the non-negative non numbers. So we talked about how to add x1 plus x2 just by adding two numbers. But it's sort of interesting to look at that geometrically. We're going to take this arrow, which is the arrow representing the state point x1, and we're going to go over to x2, and we're just going to add this arrow right onto x2. And this new point here, this is the point x1 plus x2. We're just going to add those two arrows by just putting them tip to tail. And obviously, if you just stare at that, that is the physical equivalent of addition, is putting that extra thing on the end of the previous thing. That's addition. That's the geometric version of addition. What about scalar multiplication? Well, we have a state x1. We're going to multiply that by a scalar. What does that correspond to geometrically? Well, here is the vector x1. And a x1 is just the vector whose length is a times the x1 length. So if a is 2, then 2 ax1 is going to look like that. If a is 3, it's going to be even longer. If a is 10, it's going to be longer. If a is 10.5, it's going to be longer still. Nothing wrong with fractional scalar values. And interestingly, if a is less than 1, then a times x1 is smaller than x1. So we have now successfully shown the equivalence between the geometric construct and the algebraic construct for adding vectors in one dimension and for scalar multiplication of vectors in one dimension.